Hey guys, Dean here. Today, we're going to be talking about the best side hustles that you can start at any age. Now, if you want to check out some different passive income ideas and side streams that you can make money off too, check the link in the description below because I have a video on nine different passive income streams that you can also start today. So these are side hustles, kind of like passive income streams and little business ideas that you can start from any age. So from the beginning, we're going to be talking about stuff that young people like kids and teenagers can do. And towards the end, there's just going to be a few different side hustle ideas for adults to employ and start doing too. So let's jump into it. So the first one for young people that they can do, especially kids who are at school, is selling sweets. This is basically making a sweet business where you could sell candy or sweets and chocolate at school. And it's something which there's always someone in your school who ends up doing this. And this is how a lot of big business people and rich people today actually started out. You'll hear all these stories when you watch podcasts, autobiographies of really rich people. They'll say that they started small businesses even when they were kids and they always had a business mindset. Well, there was someone in my school who actually did this too. I think there was one or two people who did this and they go to the market before school and they buy a whole bunch of really cheap sweets in bulk and then what they do is they bring them in their backpack to school at lunchtime or break time and they sell the sweets to the other kids now the reason why this was profitable and obviously you're not going to make a ton of money off doing this because kids usually have a low amount of money but kids would usually get pocket money and bring that pocket money to school and then they could buy things from the shop or buy things from the cafeteria but for an example a lot of kids parents didn't want them to eat sugar or sweets so they wouldn't actually have sweets and then this kid and basically anyone who does this would bring sweets to school that they buy for cheap and then they'd sell them for a profit to other kids so for an example they might buy a bag of sweets for like 25p or 50 pence like 25 cents or 50 cents in the dollar and then they go and sell them for a dollar or a pound or two at school and then they make a nice little profit off the kids because the kids might only have like a few pounds or a few dollars as pocket money and they'd spend them on sweets because they're not allowed to get them at home so it was a good way for this kid to make a lot of money and it's something that you can do if you're a young person and do that at school and make a profit but you do need to be careful because a lot of schools now do actually ban you selling sweets or bringing things to school and selling them so you need to be careful and it's really dependent on where you are but it's a really good way to make a little bit of extra money if you are young it's one of the more popular ideas that a lot of kids do just like kids when they make lemonade stands and sell things it's just an innocent way to make money and kind of first get a feel for selling consumer goods the second one is mowing lawns too so this is something which a lot of people could do there's always neighbors who are really busy with their normal life and they have a job or they have a lot of things which constrains their time and they might not have time to mow the lawn or the grass might get too tall or out of order and they're looking just to pay someone to do something. This is especially the same with people who are really rich. They realize that time is a really valuable asset and they don't mind paying people to save time in certain areas. This is where kids can make a pretty good amount of money too. You hear a lot of people making a fair bit of money by mowing lawns for people. And usually they only charge like five pounds, five dollars, 10 pounds, $10, something like that. So you won't make too much money off it. But as a kid, that amount of money does feel like a lot. So you can go around and if you have a lot of time on your hands, maybe it's the summer holidays or summer vacation if you're American and you have so many weeks and time that's expendable to basically do stuff with all that free time time you could just go around your whole street knocking on people's doors or asking people locally and ask them if their lawn needs mowing or if they need to do any certain jobs in the house and you can make a fair bit of money off it for an example if you made five dollars off each house and there's 10 houses in the street and you managed to do them all that's basically fifty dollars in one weekend or one week which is a nice little bit of extra money which seems like a lot when you're young you can use this money then to invest or just buy things that you need to get another one which young people can do very easily is dog walking so dog walking Walking is another simple business idea which is going to make you a little bit of extra money and literally people of any age can do it providing that people obviously trust you with their dog and animal and that you obviously have good faith in what you're doing if you're really good with animals and they know you're going to look after them and you're just a normal person then obviously people will trust you with their pets this is usually best with people that you kind of know a little bit because a lot of people are quite close to their animals and they might not always allow anyone to walk the dog but you could go around and basically employ the 
same strategy that we recommended with mowing lawns. You could just go around your street and ask everyone who has a pet and just ask them if they need you to walk the dog. The good thing about this is, especially if you're a teenager, because you can't really do this as easily as a kid, you can maybe walk one dog as a kid. But if you're a teenager or a young adult, you could walk multiple dogs at once and kind of kill two birds with one stone. So basically you could go out and walk like three or four dogs on one lead at the same time and basically make a pretty decent profit and do it all at the same time. So there's a lot of different ways that you could do this. And if you walk a few dogs per weekend or every week, you can make a nice little bit of extra money by walking people's dogs. And it's a really simple thing most people can be trusted with. This is also another great thing you could do in your free time or summer holidays and make a little bit of extra money while doing it. You could also wash people's cars. So this is another one. All of these kind of fall into the same category of just manual labor to help people who have very little time and just basically do them a favor in exchange for money. And most of the time you'll be making very simple or similar amounts of money for doing these small odd jobs. So mowing lawns, dog walking and washing people's cars, you'll all make the same kind of amount of money by doing this. But there's so much bulk of people who have a car and there's a lot of people that you can do this for that the money all does add up. So if you're only making five dollars or five pounds per car that you wash they all add up if you wash 10 cars then you made 50 dollars for an example so you can do this you can just go around the whole street and ask people if they need the car washing you could go around other streets in the neighborhood too it doesn't just have to be your main street and just go around and have basically a car washing business where you just go ask everyone if they want the car washing there's no limits to this the only limit is obviously the time that you have to spend and your expendable time but you can just wash cars for a lot of people and make a fair bit of money while you're young so now we're moving up to kind of like the team teenager age and young adults, how you can make a little bit of extra money. So the next one is just selling your stuff online. This is a way to make money without basically starting a business or creating a different job. This is just kind of like a side bit of money you can make. That's obviously not something you can keep doing unless you turn it into a business. So obviously you could just sell your old stuff online. You don't need to buy any inventory or buy any products to do it like a business just yet. This is also a good trial of selling items before actually starting a business. So you kind of get used to it and learn how to sell products and that's selling your old stuff on ebay so when we moved house i had a whole bunch of old stuff so it was a combination of just old possessions i wanted to get rid of due to minimalism and a whole bunch of things like lego and old things which i didn't really have space for or really want to transfer so what i did is i went ahead and listed them all on ebay literally hundreds of listings of individual lego figures and toys and old possessions and props and things like that and i sold them all individually there is a lot of time which goes into this for an example if you don't have some kind of postal service that makes it easy, you are going to have to pack everything up individually and ship them out. And in some cases, you might not make a profit. It really depends how you list things. On eBay, you can set things up for bid where you put it at a low price and then people will bid and you might make a really nice profit. Or you can list them as a buy it now price where people pay a fixed price for it, which might be less attractive, but usually they will still sell if you sell it at a fair price. Now, when I was selling individual Lego figures, I would make a profit, but it wouldn't really be much because most people weren't willing to pay much for postage but if you sell all your items eventually it does add up to a nice profit the only problem is is you're gonna have to make frequent trips to the post office to send so much inventory of items and it does get a little bit long-winded you also need to kind of be strong stomached because a lot of people on ebay can tend to scam you or complain that they didn't receive their item and sometimes try and get your things for free and you end up having different cases you have to deal with and a few different situations where you will lose money if you don't have proof of postage, for an example. So it can be a little bit of a challenge to do this, but you can make quite a lot of money just selling old possessions if you have a lot of them. So it can be a really useful way to make a little bit of extra money. The next one is really great for people who have been in university or someone who's done a course or a degree in a skill that they're really good with. And they can use this to do online tutoring. Now, this was something which I was looking at before I had any kind of income. I was basically looking at all the different odd jobs which I could do from home and online. And I didn't eventually do this, although it was a strong prospect, which I was interested in. And I've seen a lot of people actually reach success with this particular method and side hustle. And a lot of people have done this for a while, especially as they transitioned from college or university to make a little bit of extra money. And basically, if you've had a degree in something or if there's something you're really talented in or really good at or that you've passed to a very high grade in school, you can then do tutoring to people who are trying to do this. So if someone's trying to pass an exam or if they need teaching in a certain subject, you can do online tutoring and be paid quite a lot for this. Obviously, you're not going to be able to work full eight to nine hour days constantly and the work may be divided and in varying frequencies, but you can make like 
10 to $15 an hour actually doing online tutoring and sometimes more depending which website you choose to actually use. There's a few different websites which allow you to sign up as an online tutor and basically teach your skills or teach different school subjects to kids and teenagers and maybe even adults who are signing up and you can make a lot of money from this. It just depends on your background, your skills, your talents and what you want to teach but this can be a really useful way to make a bit of extra money on the side and do some online tutoring for a few hours. The next one is Shopify drop shipping. Now I haven't really tried this myself, I haven't put my hand in this but I've heard it can be very lucrative. Now Shopify drop shipping is basically ordering products from China but shipping them directly from China to your consumers so you don't have any kind of inventory where you're holding a lot of products which can make it pretty attractive because there's minimal investing that you need to start it up. Now there's a few pros and cons to this and basically the pros are that it takes very little investment to start up and you don't need to have a warehouse or somewhere to store a whole lot of inventory which means that you don't have to have rental prices or order hundreds and thousands of items which you may or may not sell so it can be a pretty attractive starter business but there are the cons in terms of marketing now marketing can be a huge big problem because it costs a lot of money to market on social media you may need to buy fake followers and fake engagement to boost up your page and make it attractive and you may also need to pay people like influencers who already have an influence to actually push your product you also can buy things like Facebook ads Instagram ads or Twitter engagement which is going to cost you a lot of money you can do free marketing on platforms like TikTok and Instagram if you're very creative with it and people have seen a lot of success doing this but if you don't find a good free marketing strategy it might cost you a lot of money to actually get engagement on the website and store which can be the downside of this process although if you have a little bit to invest in marketing it can be very profitable it's all about the product which you try and flip and sell and there's so many methods to this madness that can make it either a good payoff or a bit of a blunder but a lot of people have got it to work so it's worth trying as a side hustle and it can make a fair bit of money. The next one is Amazon FBA and generally just selling on Amazon. Now this is something which I'm trialing recently and I've just started doing so I'm kind of just dipping my toe in the water with trying this method as a side hustle and it's something which I don't really have enough experience just yet to actually tell you my personal experience with but I can explain the whole process. So selling on Amazon is basically signing up to Amazon and creating your own store and then selling products on it. Now you can do a very similar thing Thing to this with Shopify in terms of actually drop shipping. You can drop ship products from websites like AliExpress and Alibaba and sell them on your store without needing to hold inventory. But if you do have Amazon FBA, which is fulfilled by Amazon, that means that you hold your products in Amazon's warehouses and they will fulfill the delivery services. So you can have like one day prime delivery straight to your customers and Amazon deals with all the support and the shipping and handling, which can be really good. So if you are drop shipping, you will need to order inventory to hold in Amazon's warehouses for this process. But you can also alternatively, instead of fulfilling by Amazon, just make an Amazon store and drop ship directly from AliExpress. Although there are a few rules now which they've implemented to kind of prevent the whole drop shipping process and make it a little less seamless than it used to be. For an example, you need UPC codes to sell products. So you need to buy universal product codes to sell a product or have one directly from the product uh, manufacturer that you're selling. You also need to have your own branding, I believe, on the products. And basically, you also need to offer the support if a product goes missing, for an example. So it's a little less seamless than it used to be if you want to keep your store online and not get banned and do drop shipping the right way. So it's a little bit more of a challenge than doing it with Shopify. But the positive to this is the fact that on Amazon, you have all of the search engine of Amazon and all of the engagement and organic visitors that come to the site. So it means you don't really need to have a marketing strategy to actually sell products. You just need to have good search engine optimization and a great attractive product listing on Amazon site and the traffic will basically come to you and the rest is just done by Amazon. So there's less marketing and investment needed than Shopify because you don't need to bring in traffic but you do need to know how the whole website works and follow all the rules to actually make it work. The next one is affiliate marketing. So there's a lot of ways to actually do this method and this is a side hustle which you can go down many avenues to actually achieve. The only one which I've personally had experience in doing is Amazon affiliates. So I'm going to explain Amazon affiliates as a prime example although you can do things like Clickbank which I'll also explain too. So Amazon affiliates I will probably do an entire video on how to get started with that but this is an extremely good side 
hustle if you have something like this YouTube channel, for an example. Let's say that you had a blog or a website or a YouTube channel, and maybe you did a blog post about reviewing a new phone, or you did a video on YouTube reviewing a new smartphone. You talked about all the pros and cons of the phone, why you should or should not buy it, and what you generally think of it. You could then go on Amazon, find this product that you're reviewing on the Amazon page, and sign up for Amazon Associates, which is Amazon's own affiliate program, and they'll give you a code for the specific product which you can copy. And then you would put the link to that product in your YouTube video description or on your blog and refer your viewers to actually go and buy it. Now, if they buy that product with your link, it will give you a little bit of a cut from that product sale. So you'll get maybe 20%, 30%, something like that from the initial product sale, providing they used your link for that. And if they used your affiliate link to go and buy other products on the site, well, you'll get commission from that too. So it's a really nice way to make a bit of passive income. And if you have hundreds and thousands of visitors to your blog or hundreds of thousands of YouTube views, these affiliate links really add up. And I've seen a ton of people make hundreds of thousands of dollars or pounds every single month or year annually from just using Amazon affiliate links in the descriptions, which is crazy money. Alternatively, you can also sell affiliate programs. If you go on clickbank.com, there's so many products that you can sell, everything from vertical jump guides for basketball, gym workout programs, things like losing weight. There's loads of products and video courses that you can sell and then get a commission when people buy them with that link. Clickbank is a little bit more challenging because you need marketing knowledge in actually fencing and selling a unique product. Like you could do a product review on a workout program, how it worked for you and then try and sell it. But I think Amazon Affiliates is probably the easiest way to actually make money and the best converting program that you'll make the most money with. And the last side hustle we're gonna cover is, it is a side hustle, but it's also basically something you can turn into an empire if you're really smart about it. Now this is real estate. So a lot of people talk about real estate investing on the internet and generally in the finance space and real estate investing is extremely lucrative and it can still make you a huge profit. You can still get really rich with real estate because housing prices, they don't really tend to depreciate because the house prices always just skyrocket from year to year. For an example, years and years ago, you could probably buy a house for like $400, maybe in like the 50s or 60s or something like that. But now it would be more like $350,000 instead of $350. So you see that in the future, houses are probably going to be in the millions and they're just going to keep going up. So houses are generally very high value assets to hold and apartments, you can make a ton of money off renting them too. Now, I don't really know too much about real estate investing just yet. So most of this is just from knowledge, which I've actually learned online and through my research. But one thing that I can say that's quite profitable is renting real estate or apartments on Airbnb. This is a really good side hustle and business plan that you can actually employ, which a whole lot of young people are actually doing nowadays. This was very apparent to me when I was traveling because I was staying in Airbnbs and I talked to a lot of the hosts and they told me that they had multiple properties that they would rent out on Airbnb. Basically, they tell me that they started off from buying a new apartment and then renting the first apartment they used to live in on Airbnb and people who rented them would then obviously pay to stay in that room for a fixed amount of time and it obviously give them income on the old apartment, which would give them more money than the price that they would pay for their rent. So they would get a really nice healthy return on holding in their old apartment. And then from there, they'd build it up, rent more apartments, rent them out to other people to make more money off those apartments. And it kind of start a little bit of a real estate empire where they were making a whole lot of passive income, where they just had to offer support, maybe call up a cleaner to clean up the apartment and give them a self-check-in key or help them actually get set into the apartment. It kind of became very manageable and they make a lot of money with it. So if you have a little bit of money to invest, this is kind of like one of those side hustles where you build up to. So when you've gone through all these different business ideas and you have a little bit of money, this is a really good one to start. And that concludes the best side hustles that you can start at any age. I began from the younger years to the teenage years and the young adult years, and just a few different business ideas and plans that you can get started. It really depends on your interests, where you are in life, the money you have to invest, and what really appeals to you the most. For more finance and money videos and videos on traveling, make sure to subscribe and like the video. Thanks for watching.